Hey, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. It's noon now on the East Coast here on uh, on Monday, August the 30th. This is uh, one of our Military Monday talks where we're going to be talking to Jeff Carson uh, about interviewing techniques, for, especially for, for military veterans. Um, this is the last Monday of, of August, so the last Monday of, of, of the summertime, and we're really excited. Jeff is a recruiter for a company called Paraton, a, a large defense contracting uh, organization. Uh, he was uh, Army background. It uh, looks like he was a, probably a sergeant first class or something based upon mm -hmm. what I'm seeing above his head there. Um, but uh, that was a, he's been a recruiter now in the private sector for a, uh, the, the, more than 10 years. I'm, I think 14 years. So he's at Paraton now. Um, and Jeff, why don't you go ahead and just uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself? Well, thanks, Bob. And thanks again for having me today. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, yes, uh, I am also I'm a veteran. Um, 14 years since I've been transitioned out of military, retired. Uh, and currently, um, I've been with a company called Paraton now. We've changed names a few times, as you probably already know, um, for about four years now. Uh, a little bit of information about Paraton. We're a defense contractor that specializes in cyber, uh, intel, defense, homeland security, and also state, city, local, and health. So uh, we're currently we're around 22,000 employees. Um, around 4,400 of those are military veterans. Uh, we're an up-and-coming company. Had about 70, about seven billion dollars in revenue last year, and um, we're in 70 different locations. So uh, great company, great opportunities, and uh, we'd love to have you know veterans take advantage of some of our opportunities even after the call. All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, for, for those of you who've been with us on other Military Mondays, you know, uh, we, we try to focus on topics that are veteran specific. And sometimes we focus on the whole hiring process or sometimes we focus on other things. Uh, I'm really excited today because uh, Jeff uh, is going to talk. We're going to really focus on just one aspect of that, which is the interview process. Um, like I said, there's the there's lots of different things to what, when it goes into a transition, but sometimes you get advice that might be what they call an inch deep but a mile wide. I think we're going to get a little deeper into one little bit here um, and talk about just the interview process. So, you know, you put that application in, you, you met somebody at a job fair, you had the right skills, and someone like Jeff says, hey, we need you for to come in for an interview. So, you know, what are you going to do now type thing? So, you know, why don't we start off with, uh, hey, you got that call. What, like, what should a job seeker do, Jeff, to start preparing once they get this, you know, you know, they're, I'm sure they're excited, right? <laughs> right, right. And it's a lot of different things that go through your head when you get that call for an interview. But probably most in, the important pas aspect of it is, first of all, is, is preparation. Um, you don't want to wing it. You know, the one thing about preparing for an interview, most of us think we're experts at it. But, you know, if you haven't done it for a while, you can get a little rusty. But for those that are transitioning out of military, it can be kind of nerve wracking. So the best way to do it is, first of all, is just prepare um, the day before. You want to make sure that your attire is lined up, ready. Uh, you don't want to wake up in the morning trying to figure out what tie you're going to wear, um, what suit you're going to wear. So you want to prepare for it, first of all. Um, and when it comes to preparing uh, for an in interview, also, you want to make sure um, of things that you want to bring with you to be prepared for, um, such as, you know, notepad, two pens, um, extra copies of your resume and just some information uh, about the company. Uh, one of the things that um, uh, when you're preparing for an interview is you're going to be nervous. So be expect that. So the more of these things that you can prepare um, be hope beforehand, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. Um, one thing that most uh, transitioning veterans struggle with uh, preparing for that, that interview is having that elevator pitch. Um, I, I can remember even when I first transitioned, um, I typed up my elevator pitch. I wanted to make sure that I kind of had a. You don't want to sound like a robot, but you do want to kind of have an idea of what you want to say when that question is posed to you you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. So that's one thing that I would recommend that you kind of type it up so that you're not, you know, you're not going on for five minutes talking about the resume instead of just a little bit of information about yourself. Um, so that's pretty much how you want to start off as far as preparation, doing as much, knowing as much about the company as possible. Uh, when you come to the interview, um, you want to make sure that you have uh, that stuff in a little black portfolio or a little, you know, something that you can write on, um, information about the company and uh, copies of your resume. So just being prep being prepared is going to calm some of the nerves. Hey, I got a question for you real quick, uh, Jeff, when we was talking about the preparing part too, you know, for, for those of us, I mean, I just got out of the military in, in 2014, so it hasn't been, it's, it's, it seems like yesterday, but man, it turned around seven years ago. But um, 
you know, like what's just what how would you know what to wear to an interview? I mean, because we in the military, you know what to wear. You got a uniform to wear. They tell you to wear your, your dress blues or, or you're not or to wear your, you know, your regular camis or something like that. Um, but every job is also different. So if you're a transitioning veteran, you know, is it should you ask the recruit? Like, how do you know what the appropriate level of attire is for a, for an interview? Well, you know, first of all, you got to know the industry. Um, you know, it's 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 uh, you don't want to just say everybody should wear a suit and tie, which you should if it's for that particular industry. Mm -hmm. But if you're interviewing for a construction job or something that's a lot more casual, then you kind of want to follow the norm as far as what the company's wearing. And it's OK to ask the recruiter as well um, uh, for the for if you know, you're going into a professional environment. You definitely want to stick to neutral colors such as navy, uh, gray, black, uh, you know, um, you want to stay away from loud patterns. Uh, something that's not a distraction to the interviewer when it comes to, to being interviewed. And the same way with uh, when it comes to young ladies, you want to make sure that you're wearing professional attire. And a good point to remember, too, as far as women is, you know, ask someone that you really trust, uh, that you kind of look up to to say, hey, is this outfit appropriate for what for the interview? So those will be some good things. Just make sure that you stay neutral with those colors. Um, invest in your attire. Um, if you're going to be, if you're interviewing for jobs, you need to have a couple good interview suits. You don't want to wear the same one because they may bring you in for a second interview and you definitely don't want to come in with the same suit on. So this is the time now to invest in your attire, buy you a couple suits, three or four suits that you're prepared to go on interviews on. Yeah. I think one thing that a lot of job seekers don't really appreciate sometimes is that the, the recruiter, in this case, Jeff, is very invested in making sure you have a good presentation at the interview as well. Cause that's it reflects on him and his company. Yes. You know, so, so by, and, and not every hiring manager is the same. So Jeff would know the difference between this hiring manager, and that hiring manager. So yet yeah, ask those recruiters because they, they'll let you know, you know, what to expect on those interviews. I mean, they, they, that's exactly what their job is, is to help translate that stuff. Yeah. You know, when I first started recruiting, that was one of the things I used to always uh, say in my interview, please dress up appropriately or wear the appropriate attire. I don't really say that anymore. That was kind of a long time ago when I said it. And then it kind of hit me that, you know, you, you really should know that if you don't, uh, you can ask someone, you can Google it, but you definitely, you don't, don't worry, don't dress under for what the interview is. If you're going to go above, go a little higher than what it is, because, you know, we've all heard that adage of, you know, first impressions. They really do last. People do remember that, you know, they'll even label you in some situations. They'll be like, well, that's the guy that came in with the, you know, the purple suit on or with the purple tie or so you don't want to be remembered for uh, wearing a tire that's just not appropriate. Yeah. So now so we're in the we're in the interview. We, we prepared, you know, like I said, Jeff, Jeff kind of helped us to figure out how to prepare. You know, once you get in there and you're doing, you're, you're handling the interview, I, a couple of things I know that you like to talk about, Jeff, are things like, you know, being an active listener and selling yourself. I mean, how do those pieces fit into uh, the actual interview itself? Well, you know, the one thing to remember when it comes to um, responding to questions, especially those that are transitioning, you know, veterans, we use a lot of acronyms that sometimes uh, you're, you're the person that's interviewing you may not know what it is. So you want to make sure that you're uh, not only listening to the question, but also um, answering appropriately, um, showing how you're trained and skilled for a particular position, uh, being prepared to give examples uh, of relatable experiences. Um, so it's, it's really your opportunity uh, to relate to what your experiences are and your background is when it comes uh, to the position, but you definitely want to be an active listener, kind of follow the, the interviewer that's, that's interviewing you. Um, if they talk a lot of military lingo, then you probably know you probably have a veteran in front of you that kind of understands. And in some cases, a person that's well-versed in military terms. So, um, listen to what the, the question is being asked of you and try to stay focused on answering to, to, so they can find out exactly what they, what they need to find out. Yeah. What, the, what, what you're saying there too, Jeff is a great, point i know that in the transition class that a lot of veterans go through they really harp on you know pull all the military stuff out of your resume and and, and translate to civilian speak which is a good tip obviously but like what you're saying i think is especially in the government's the the, the cleared spaces when you work for a government contractor there's a good chance the person that you're going to be working with might be very comfortable talking military lingo mm -hmm. so I, I get what you're saying there about trying to, to to play off of what they're what they're feeding you and knowing you know, be prepared for either or, I guess, is what you're saying. It is. And just know that the industry that you're interviewing for. So it could be um, you could be interviewing for government, uh, defense contractor, nonprofit, um, 
city or state. So you just need to know when you're applying for that position to make sure that you that that it applies. Yeah. Um, it's not a one fit all. It's not a take everything out of your out of your resume that's military or totally civilianize it. So it's, it all depends on what type of position that you're applying for. And as you're reading the job description, some of those acronyms that they're looking for in your resume, uh, some of those terms that they're looking for in your resume. So uh, not only follow the, the interviewer, but also follow the job description as well. Yeah. So when we're talking about selling yourself too, I mean, how is this? I mean, a lot of people, when they come out of the, of the service, the first picture they get in their brain of, of, of what the interview is like is going to be like a soldier of the quarter board or a meritorious promotion board, you know, and whether or not you're coming out as a junior person where you're used to being the guy on the receiving end, or maybe you're coming out as a senior person where you're used to being asking the questions, you know, how does an interview typically differ from say something like a, like a sol soldier of the quarter board or something like that? Well, the one thing about, I can even remember, um, you know, going on promotion boards and sitting in that chair, rigid, uh, not smiling, um, sort of like that DA photo. Most of us, mm -hmm. the military members, know about that DA photo. That's not the image that you want to project. Um, you want to smile. That's the first thing you got to remember. You're not on a board. You want to smile. You want to relax. You want to be en enthusiastic about the interview. Um, don't just be abrupt with just asking, answering the question and ending it at that. You can elaborate a little bit more, talk about um, you know, how you use this particular skill or this particular program or system. So you want to relax and you want to sell yourself. Cause remember, um, especially if you're going to be, they're going to be, you're going to be, you're interviewing for a position that may be working directly with the person that you're interviewing with. So they, they're, they want to make sure that you are uh, going to be a friendly, a nice person to be around every day. Uh, cause the, the job every day isn't going to be like the interview. So you definitely want to sell yourself, stay positive. Um, even when you have to talk about negative situations, you still want to stay positive. Don't 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 harp on a negative situation. Just explain it, what happened, and and talk about how you learned from it. Uh, those are those are great tips. And like I said, I think uh, that can be one of the, the toughest parts for people when they when you when, if you're a military veteran when you come out, if you get into a position where you're you know not comfortable you're going to end up reverting back to your that 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 five or 15 or 25 years of of your experience and you go back to you know sir yes sir you know yes uh, that kind of thing or I, I i will get you the answer you know type thing yeah. <laughs> that military um, briefing yes yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trained to do military briefings so sometimes we, we go back to doing a brief of a commanding officer or whoever you're briefing you kind of yeah. got that seriousness about you but the interview is to find information about yourself because remember if you're invited to an interview then you you must have some of the qualifications for the particular that particular position so they're bringing you in to find more out about you as a person in addition to hear you talk about what's on your resume as well yeah somebody once told me that you can expect anybody who's at the interview process should have the qualifications for the job the, just the hard qualifications at that point mm -hmm. you're starting to look that's when you can ex go into your soft skills right if, if if you bring if jeff if you as a recruiter bring a slate of five or seven candidates to an interview you're kind of expected that all five or seven, they all meet the basic qualifications. Am I, am I right about that? That's definitely. I mean, no, no employers, no recruiters are going to waste anyone's time by bringing them in if they don't meet the basic qualifications. That's just not going to happen. Um, not only will you will be wasting your time, but you'll definitely irritate your hiring manager uh, <laughs> if, you, if you bring them in to talk to him. So definitely, uh, if, you, if you're invited to an interview, uh, you're in the running for an opportunity. Yeah, that's that's good to know. So we talked a little bit about the, you know, being prepared. We talked a little bit about selling yourself and we talked about, you know, understanding those types of things. So, you know, towards the interview, let, let's let's go for, let's go before we get all the way after the interview, like um, at the very end of the interview. What's a what's a good way for the candidate to exit? Like, should I if I'm the candidate and they say, do you have any questions for me? Should, should I say no, I'm good. So what, 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 mm -hmm. you know, what should I do to kind of gracefully exit that interview? Well, you definitely want to have some questions. Um, most of the time you want to have some, some prepared questions, some general questions about, you know, when you're going to make a decision on the opportunity, do you think I'm a good candidate for this position? Those are general ones, but during the interview, you should have some particular questions about the position. Um, if there's anything that's unclear to you that you didn't understand, uh, if we just want clarity on it, that is the time to, to bring those back up just to make sure that you understood what was expected, uh, what they're looking for, 
uh, and so forth. So you definitely want to have some some questions. Um, and you also just want to and you can even be, you know, be bold and say, hey, do you think I'm a good candidate for this position? Do you think I'm the right person for this job? You can put them on the spot if you want to. They'll either say, well, we're going to interview a few more people. We'll let you know. That's usually the response um, unless you're just dead on and they say, hey, we think you're a good match for it. And, you know, they'll move to the next steps. Um, you definitely ask, go ahead. Is this a time for should I am I should I ask things like uh, about salary vacation days where my office is going to be? That's that's not really a time unless they go into that. That's not a real good time to start asking those kind of questions because they haven't extended an offer to you yet. Mm. So you want to wait for those type of responses. Um, in some cases, when it comes to that salary question, sometimes the recruiter, before they bring you in for an interview, they may ask you what your range is. Um, so that, again, we're not wasting your time and you're not wasting our time because we're not a match as far as our salary requirements. So in a lot of cases, uh, they may ask what your range is before bringing you in. In some cases, some companies, they may not discuss the salary until you actually come in for an interview. So it's uh, it's not a one size fits all. Um, and I've heard that many times where people say, you know, first person that mentioned salary loses. It's not always the case. Um, it's just different companies do different things. Recruiters like to do things a certain way, uh, especially busy recruiters that's going through a lot of uh, uh, resumes and speaking to a lot of applicants. They want to make sure that, you know, we're not wasting your time if it's not a good match. So if I'm talking to if I'm a transitioning veteran and, and I'm I think a lot of transitioning veterans like to talk to recruiters who got some kind of military experience, you know, like yourself. And there's and and by the way, there's tons of. You know, especially in the, in the defense industry, there's there's not all recruiters have got military backgrounds, but a lot do. There's 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 a quite a bit that, that do. Um, is it OK if I'm a job seeker and you say, hey, what's your salary? expert? What, what if I say, you know what, Jeff, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, what if I say, Jeff, I'm coming out. of I was in the Navy for 20 years. I got out as a chief petty officer. I, you know, standard salary. My, my family was like, but a lot of times people don't know. And so job seekers, they're, they're afraid to say what their expectations are because they just don't know. Can you help with that as a recruiter? What's, what's I can't I can't help with that. Most of the times I'll um you know we'll kind of let you know what type of range that we're looking for. Um, especially it, it's kind of a race in this industry for especially cybersecurity and, and and IT and intelligence. So it's a race uh, for candidates. So in most cases you can let the the applicant know this is the range that we're looking for. We're looking for someone in this particular range. Uh, most companies already have a minimum and a maximum, and they kind of want to fit you into that area. Um, it's not beneficial for a recruiter if you mention a, uh, for example, the, the the minimum for the position is 120, and you know, and the max is another number, and you say I'm looking for 85. Um, I know for most defense contractors, especially Paraton, we're we're not in the business of lowballing people. Um, there is a range that we do want to bring people in. Um, it's good to, to the lower attrition because, you know, eventually that'll come back to bite you if you, if you, you know, you take advantage of a service member and offer them a salary that's well beyond what you probably could. Um, so that's the reason why we have things in place like that. But for, for the most part, you know, you can, if you know you're talking to a military member, um, a good one will kind of advise you and tell you, you know, where to go and search for, you know, different links on as far as what you should be asking for. But in most cases, they will let you know this is the range we're looking for. We're looking for someone with this price point. Yeah. I think a lot of folks you, you coming out of the service, their last experience with a recruiter was, you know, coming out of high school or coming out of college, you know, talking to a military recruiter. And maybe, mm -hmm. maybe they didn't have a great experience. Let's just be honest. And I was an Army recruiter as well, too. So <laughs> I, I'm... I'm <laughs> yeah, I, I did three years recruiting doctors, you know, but but there, but the, the recruiting in the private sector is different. So you know, there's a different it's a it whole is. different dynamic. It's a different range. So they are very much more on your side in the sense mm -hmm. of in the sense of wanting to make sure you get all the all the all the truth, you know. Yes, that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, it's always just best to be upfront. Um, even in my days as an army recruiter, because if you if you fib and tell untruths. They'll join the army, come back and say, you didn't tell me this or you didn't yeah. share this with me and so forth. And so it, it, it's it's to your benefit. It's to the company's benefit to be upfront um, as far as when you're talking about salaries. Um, and, and I always you know tell people this because many times I've heard this this thing about don't let people lowball you. Don't let the recruiter lowball you. Um, the recruiter wants to hire you. Um, mm -hmm. If they interview you, they think you're a good match. 
Um, that's because that's what we're paid to do. We are paid to hire people, to bring people uh, into the company. So they're on your side, they work for the company, but they're on your side as well, especially those that have, you know, those military veterans. They'll, sometimes they'll share stories about their experience of what, how they went through transitioning. I know I do it many times where um, I mention that, um, I always mention that you're not enlisted and you're not uh, commissioned anymore. So um, you don't have to stay in a job for 20 years. Uh, but so don't look at it as I, I have to accept this, this position and I'm going to, this is my permanent job forever. Yeah. Um, there's opportunities to grow within a company. I know in Paraton, there are a lot of opportunities for promotion, for growth opportunities. So you may start off in a position, but you know, when you're there, you may find out that there are a lot more opportunities uh, to be promoted within, within the company. Yeah. So we've done our interview. We asked our questions. They asked their questions. Interviews all done. Shake hands with the people that uh, talk to us. You know, what, what now? Are we are we out of sight, out of mind? Do we just go home and just check our email every twelve hours and hope to get something <laughs> back? Or like, what 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 should we do post interview if we're if we're a job seeker and we've 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 had this interview? Well, one of the things that I always uh, I recommend is within twenty four hours you want to send an email to that person that in, that interviewed you and just tell them thank you uh, for considering them for the position for interviewing them for the position. Um, that's always good to know. Um, I've, I've seen people say, um, send them a note, but you know, we're in a virtual environment now. You're not going to get anyone's home address. And so the best way to do it is send them an email, thanking them for the interview, thank the recruiter for the inter interview. Um, and then you should probably follow up uh, within three to five days. I would say five days to find out to get an update. Um, I believe in, in social media, so I think you should send a LinkedIn request. Uh, to the person that's interviewing you, see if he's on LinkedIn. It's always a good thing to, to grow your network. Um, when you send that email, make sure you let them know that you're interested in the position if you are. So that's nothing uh, greater than to let the, the person that you interview with know that you are definitely interested in the position uh, and, and you know, let them know that. You just don't want to interview and say, thanks for interviewing me. Uh, another thing to do is be prepared to come back for a second interview. If they want you to come back for a second interview, uh, be prepared to do that as soon as possible rather than later. So if they say, what's your next available date? Try to make that as soon as possible. You know, you want to keep that, um, you know, keep your, keep your name and your image and your resume on the, on the, on your mind, keep yourself at the top of the list. Um, and also one thing that I always try to do is, uh, after the interview pretty quickly within 24 hours is assess how you interview. So you want to write down, uh, questions that you probably didn't respond to well, um, while they're fresh in your mind. Um, another thing too, I want to mention too, I forgot to mention during the interview, um, uh, preparing for the interview process, many cases uh, doing a job description, reading a job description, you may come upon a particular term or system that you're not familiar with. You definitely want to Google that, um, do some research to find out. You may not have necessarily experience in it, but it's always good to know how a particular program, system, something that you've never heard of work. Um, you, you never want to be where I've never heard of that before. I've never seen it before. I don't know what that term means. Uh, we have this this special thing called Google uh, <laughs> that you pretty much can look up anything out to assist you as far as learning about things you just don't know about. So that's great. That 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 piece, um, you know, about about sending that email, it, I think is is so important. And a lot of people I talk to when veterans are not really sure they should do that, but you but you hear from everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. And I and I think what Jeff said too about if 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 you think you're if you like that job, that's your chance to say I really think I'd like you know after talking about X Y and Z, I'm even more excited about this job. And yes. on the contrary, if it by the way by the on the contrary, if it looks like it's not going to be a good job, you can always say hey you know what after talking this may not be a good fit for me. Exactly. You might go to an interview and find out this is not what I thought it was. Mm hmm. You know, the one thing about um, when you look at the plate of the, the common recruiter, they're going through a lot of resumes. They're reviewing a lot of resumes and they're interviewing a lot of people. Uh, when you if you're interested in a position, um, when you show that interest to the recruiter or the hiring manager that you're really excited about it and that you think it's a good match and you'd love to be part of that particular company, um, they may be interviewing. They may have have three people that they're you know, considering for the position. The other two may be like, well, I got a few more interviews I have to go on. They may they may not appear as excited or enthusiastic about that particular position. And so they may make the decision of, hey, I think I'm going to go with this person because uh, they're available now. They're interested in the position um, and they followed up. 
And so some cases just going that that extra step, that extra mile could make you, you know, be that person that they select for that position. All right. Well, we've covered just about everything, I think, so far. We've got about five minutes left in our little live stream here. Um, I don't know if there's anything um, that, that uh, Ashley, our producers in the background here, I don't know if, she, if there's anything else or if we just want to kind of just, just start to wrap it up. What do we think, Ashley? Hi, guys. No, thank you for going over all of those topics. I think we covered a lot of wonderful information on interviews. Um, and if there are any questions that anyone thinks of afterwards, you can always reach us at customer service at clearjobs.net. And I'm sure uh, I'll let you know that if you want to reach out to me, my name is Bob Wheeler. I'm a senior account rep here at uh, clearjobs.net. And I'm also one of our um, veteran hiring advocates as well. So you can find me on LinkedIn. It's 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 B Wheeler or Bob Wheeler five. You can find the only Bob Wheeler under clearjobs.net. So, mm -hmm. so I will I will connect with anybody um, in a, that's a veteran. You can come to our check out our job fairs coming up. Make sure you create a profile on the site and everything like that. And I'm uh, Jeff, you want to give a throw out any contact information or anything else? Uh, I'm also uh, on uh, a LinkedIn, um, so I'm always out there if you want to connect with me. Also, uh, my email address is uh, jeffrey.lynn.carson uh, at mail.paraton.com. Uh, so I know it's a long email address, so if it's easy for you just to reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, I'm here to help. Um, uh, we have a military veteran team designated to assist our transitioning veterans find uh, job employment. So uh, if you need any tips, any advice, um, you know, any assistance, if you're interested in any positions at Paraton, definitely want to reach out to me. Uh, I can expedite and get you uh, looked at a lot faster than you simply applying online and waiting through our, our ATS. So thanks again, Bob, for having me. And uh, You got it. I, it was and, a great uh, conversation, Jeff. I really enjoyed it. Um, I appreciate the, really diving into that interview piece because, like we said, you know, you get to the interview – you might be one of five or one or six or one or seven, but every one of those folks is just as qualified as you probably. So like Jeff said, you know, be prepared, you know, ask good questions, be an active listener, make sure that you're lined up with stuff, you know, and follow up. And if you do those things, you can be the best you that you can be because at that point it is all about the interview. It is, it is. So definitely want to, and, and, and just keep going. You will find an opportunity. Um, you know, sometimes the first interview, you may not get it. Sometimes you may take you, you know, you may have to go through a few interviews before you're selected. Um, but just keep trying. You will find an opportunity. Someone will, uh, you know, find you and you'll be, and you, and you want to be, you want that company to be excited about selecting you uh, for the position. Nothing, no, no greater feeling as a veteran transition to get that first job to say, hey, we want you. All righty. So for, for, for clearjobs.net, I'm Bob Wheeler, Jeff Carson from Paraton. We are going to sign off for this Military Monday. Hope everybody uh, has a great day and looks forward to a nice Labor Day weekend. And we're here for you. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care, everybody.